uh, I have something that is really uh, getting in my craw uh, that's going around and I want to dispel this misinformation and disinformation that's out there. Uh, it's based on a video by a very well-intentioned person, but it has sent people going around with the notion that um, construction, uh, wood, various other things that are part of the sound of a guitar do not matter in, electri in an electric guitar. The only thing that matters is the strings and the pickups, and if you watch this video on the internet, it proves it. Um, and I'm going to talk really quickly before I start disproving it. What's wrong with that video? Now, the guy seems like a very nice, smart guy, but he does not understand how experiments are done. He starts with two guitars that sound different, and he has an objective in mind. So, and he keeps changing the circumstances until he finds a situation which is basically to have strings attached to two different desks and a pickup so it sounds like his Telecaster in an open uh, tuning. And first off, I hear a difference between the two guitars, so it doesn't prove anything. Secondly, um, the way experiments are done is you don't keep re-engineering the experiment until you get the result you want, which is what he's doing. That is bad science. That is not how experiments are, are, are performed. Uh, secondly, he's not fretting any chords, and if you think that uh, a guitar that is just strummed openly is going to sound exactly the same as when you are fretting a chord, um, then you have not played guitar much. Or you're not listening when you're doing it. So, the way that experiments to reach conclusions are found is you have a repeatable and then you observe the results of that repeatable experiment and in this situation we are using our ears uh, and there is an excellent uh, experiment to show the difference in sounds of body types done by Warmoth and I will put that link um, in the description and uh, you can absolutely hear the difference from body type to body type in what was a very controlled, repeatable situation. And there was not a predetermined factor saying, hey, let's see how we can keep adjusting the controls until things sound the same. It was, let's create the exact same circumstances three times over and control every variable except for the body type and we will have something, you know, and, and we will hear what that sounds like. And you can absolutely hear the different sound. And it is concurrent with what I find in my experience with body types. Um, and I want to talk about electric guitars as a whole. So my background, in case you don't know, which is the overwhelming majority of people, I've been a professional uh, engineer and producer and uh, mixer for close to 30 years. I've been a professional musician for, I don't know, 34 years or 30, 37 years. I have been, um, over 37 years, I've been collecting guitars for 39 years and I have a lot of them. I tend to do the majority of maintenance and tech work and repairs on them myself. Uh, and in terms of my career, I've also written articles, uh, reviewing equipment. I used to do this for a magazine called EQ, which was a big engineering magazine which doesn't exist anymore. Um, I have beta tested products for over a dozen companies. Why? Because they trust my ear, they trust my ability to distinguish between certain sounds, to understand the how and why things are working the way they are, and come to them with uh, observations and suggestions. Um, so I'm, I'm certainly not the 
greatest, most capable listener on the planet of the earth, but I have put a lot of time and skill into this. Uh, and, and I am able to notice things, not because I have magical powers, but because I have been doing it for so long and I have learned what to listen to that other people generally are not hearing. That being said, let's talk about why guitars, electric guitars, uh, work and why they sound different from each other. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep this video under 15 minutes. So we're going to make this really quick. This is a 1962, believe it or not, this is a Gibson Les Paul. You can see it says so. Uh, they until the next year they had to change the name and it became the SG but this is the one that's handy and it's going to be part of the control group and I'm going to show you something so the electric guitar is a holistic device where I mean instrument where everything is playing a factor in the sound um, the wood itself has a resonant tone and then on top of that when you introduce other tones into this wood it is going to basically create harmonic partials uh, it, you, if you if i just put a transducer on this thing and, and blasted a 1k tone into it and then um, put a a, 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 a piezo pick pickup on something you would not simply see 1k you would see a bunch of other frequencies because of the harmonic resonance of this body um, other things are going to matter too, or it's going to have an effect on other things. All guitars have an effect on the sound of the attack of, of each note. The, the sustain and the decay, every guitar has its own profile of those things. Um, other materials matter, the way the bridge is mounted, what material is in the nut, uh, how is the neck set, why do these things matter? Because it's gonna, you can hear it acoustically, and that's out of tune. And if you can hear something acoustically, then you will be able to hear it electrically as well. Now, why? Why does any of this matter on the strings? Because these strings are attached to the body ultimately. The string, these strings here are going through the nut. The nut is attached to the neck. The bridge here is attached to the body. That is going to change the way each string vibrates. So these harmonic partials that are created by the body are actually going to change the way the string vibrates. You're not going to get just the same if you you know if you put this under a, a, a super high speed camera where you could see the vibration of the string you would observe a different type of vibration if it was attached to nothing than if it is attached to this so aside from the the uh, sonic characteristics of the uh, attack and the decay and the, and the release it is going to affect the way the string vibrates which then we get to the pickup so the pickup if you don't know how a pickup works here I, I i have my handy little this device here is a light you can see a magnet that you shake back and forth it goes between a copper coil and when that magnet passes through the copper coil it generates alternating current um, this is the same principle that's in a uh, moving coil dynamic microphone. Uh, it is the same principle that's in a generator where the coils spin around a, a magnetic core. Uh, and it is a similar principle to a guitar pickup, except in a guitar pickup, the magnet is staying in one place these coils are copper, by the way, which are non-magnetic. The magnet's staying in one place, and a steel string is vibrating near the magnet, which is disrupting the magnetic field. That disruption of the magnetic field is enough to generate current off of the copper coils. Now, why do some 
pick up sound different than others. Here's the determining factor. When you measure a pickup, you are not measuring the output of the pickup. You are measuring the resistance of the copper coils in that pickup. And it is actually not telling you anything about the power of the magnet. It's not even telling you uh, the inductance of those coils, which would be measured in Henry's. So when we say that pickup is 8.1 kilo ohms, we were just saying that is the AC resistance of that uh, amount of wire. And that will not determine the loudness of the pickup because different magnets are going to change that. However, the amount of coils will have an effect on the frequency balance. And I find that the more coils you have, you know, the hotter it is, the less high end you have, uh, and the, the, the fewer coils you have, it's a brighter pickup. And you can hear that in Gibson PAFs from when they are wound below 8K to when they are wound up to 9K. 9K is going to be thicker. It's going to have less chime in it. Uh, it may or may not be louder depending on that particular magnet. But if it is a high-powered magnet, that is going to help make things louder. And by the time Gibson really got to something consistent in, say, around 1961, 1962, they had gone with fewer windings and a more powerful magnet, and that seemed to be uh, the magic recipe for them. So, those are in your guitar. But what happens when the string's not vibrating and the guitar gets, you either tap the pickup, you just tap it with your, with your fingers and you hear that popping sound, that's because the magnet's being jostled inside the coil. Or if you tap the body and the coil, which is attached to the body, moves, you are going to hear that as well because pickups are microphonic. Now, when a pickup is microphonic, that doesn't just mean that, you know, or when I talk into it like this, you're going to hear that. But those overtones of the guitar itself are going to be picked up like a transducer. So you're not just getting the strings, you're also getting the body. And that's why the sound of one guitar to the next is going to have an impact on the output because you're actually going to be hearing the body in that. The last thing, and I see this is going to be, have to be a 15-minute two-parter because I'm out of time already. These guys, you can totally hear them. There is a resistant measure, resistance measurement to every potentiometer that's in here, your volume pot. Uh, it work, it's a voltage divider circuit, but what happens is your brightness is going to be determined by the resistance of your pot. The higher the resistance, the brighter the tone will be. The lower the resistance, the darker the tone will be. If you measure a pot above 500K, which is where Gibson likes to put their humbucker-associated uh, pots, you're going to get brighter. If it's below 500K, it's going to get darker. That is the way the, uh, that resistance works and also has to do with the way it's loading the pickup and the inductance of the pickup. So that has an effect on the frequency. So these are your first determining factors uh, in terms of the tone, the sound of that pickup, and the pot. And then how the string is behaving is then going to affect your overall sound and the string behaves however that is going to behave because every other variable has an impact. Uh, I will show that in the next video because we can only do 15 minute segments. Thank you very much. Instagram and I'll port this to everything else. All right.